the first paragraph of the safety sheet, if you take a look at that. I don't normally do this. It's two times a year where I'll give you a handout and actually read it with you and go over it with you. First time was the first day of school when I did the for the uh, rules, grading, stuff like that. The second time and last time this year we'll do this is right now. And that's because I've never had any real problems with safety. Uh, never had anybody really get seriously hurt in chem lab, but it can happen. It absolutely can happen. I mean, I hear going to safety conferences and you see other things on, on school. You see them on, uh, you know, the news where people get very badly injured in chemistry lab. Uh, chemistry lab, probably the second most dangerous thing you do all day. Uh, most dangerous being for chances of getting injured being gym class. Okay. Best chance of getting injured probably in gym class and then chemistry. Uh, if you have shop, I guess that would be third, uh, but it might be a second. It's probably very close. But really, where else in this place are you going to get injured? In this building, are you going to get hurt? But we're going to work with burner. We're going to work with fire, uh, acid, chemicals, poisons, all the time. Right? And you have to treat them with respect. Things that are just hot and sharp are here. You know, okay, you're going to have to worry about that. So if you read that first paragraph, it says that... These rules are necessary, and if you don't follow them, you know, obviously you're going to be, you know, getting a zero on that lab. You're not going to be allowed to do labs. And especially in a lab this big with this many students, you have to actually be, take responsibility for yourself. I can't watch 26 people at the same time. It's not possible. It's not physically possible to see everyone make a mistake at the same time. Um, so you guys have to take responsibility. You know, when I tell you something, you have to do it that way. You have to read the handout beforehand and know what you're going to do and not screw up. Because if you do, two things will happen. One, you'll get a bad grade because you'll probably screw up the actual lab. And But the second, more important one, is you might hurt yourself or somebody else. So let's go over the lab safety regulations, things that are unique to, to, to chemistry, which you wouldn't have to do in any other class, every other class. First of all, you will be wearing goggles and apron every day. Every time we do a lab, you're going to be wearing goggles. And not the good ones, not the kind I have that are just like kind of glasses, but the kind back there in that cabinet, if you look back there, that white cabinet. Uh, they're, they're not going to be the nicest things in the world, but they are going to be clean. <clears throat> that cabinet, when you turn it, when at the end of the lab, I turn them on, and it's an ultraviolet light, like you see maybe in your um, uh, hair st uh, stylist has like an ultraviolet light, keeps the combs and stuff underneath it. Maybe in a dentist's office has an ultraviolet light, kills bacteria. All right? Um, so it, they are sterilized after every use. So you're not going to worry about, they may not look very clean. They're washed once or twice a year. I usually wash them, actually, with soap and water. I, you guys do it. But they are because they are put in there at the end of the lab. Got to have to wear them every time. You can't wear them up here. You can't wear them around your neck. Got to be on your eyes. I'll yell at you a couple times. Then you start losing points. Hopefully that won't happen. Aprons, too. Um, you want to wear an apron mainly to protect you, but also to protect your clothes. You know, most of you guys have nicer stuff. Not today. It looks like most of the people are in, in uh, T-shirts and stuff. But you will have dresses on. You will have nicer outfits on, uh, especially if you have modern airs or something else going on. And you got a concert or something you have to get dressed up for. Or there's a game for a basketball player and you got a shirt and tie on. Okay? That's what the aprons are there for. Um, and uh, But it's also there to protect you. Okay, so you have to wear those every time. Gloves, only if necessary. I rarely have you wear gloves. Turns out gloves are one of those things that, yeah, they protect your hands, but they also cause more accidents than they prevent because none of them fit very well. You guys have smaller hands, some are bigger hands, so you have a hard time with the gloves. I'll tell you the things you have to wear gloves with, but there aren't many. <clears throat> Number two, if you look at the second one down there, again, I have to read every one of these. I want to read every one of these uh, because I've never had a major problem. I don't expect to have one. I don't want to have one this year. Um, worst I've had, I mean, I've had people burn themselves, pick up something hot. I've had people cut themselves, even had to get stitches. All right, that's the worst that's ever happened, and usually it was from some sharp piece of glass. You know, you got to be careful of that. But that's even that's extremely rare. I can count on one hand how many times I've had even those little things happen. Okay. Number two, all directions and instructions given before or during the lab must be adhered to. Now, I will give you a handout in every lab. I mean, here's the handout for today. It's just a safety sheet. But you'll have a lab with the procedure. And the procedure will have specific things to do and not to do. But it is not comprehensive. At the beginning of every lab, I'll go over the back there, every single lab, and I'll talk to you for five minutes maybe at the most. And at that lab, I'll stand back there. I'll show you all the chemicals we're going to use that day. I'll say, okay, when you pour this, make sure you do that. Make sure you don't do this. I'll have very specific instructions. You must pay real good attention. 
during that first five minutes. Because after that, you're on your own. you got to go back there. And I can't correct your mistakes as you're doing them because there's too many of you. Okay? Number three, clothing and attire. Let's talk about that. should be appropriate to the labs. Now, what I'm saying here is there are, in most colleges will have very specific regulations. You can't wear sandals, open-toed shoes. You can't wear, um, I, I remember in an organic lab, we couldn't wear contact lenses or, um, you know, you were even discouraged from wearing uh, polyester or any kind of um, uh, synthetic fabrics. You should only wear cotton and blue jeans. And you aren't allowed to wear shorts. All of those things are absolutely strictly enforced in, in certain labs in college. Because, and, and right now, almost none of you would be able to do it. You have shorts on, almost all of you. Many of you have uh, sandals on. And uh, you couldn't, and probably a lot of you have contact lenses in. All right, now, I am not going to make it an absolute hard and fast rule. But keep this in mind. If you're wearing shorts and you spill something, it's going right on your skin. It's not going to hit your jeans first and be able to um, wash it off. If you're wearing open toe sandals, you know, that's even worse. You drop something on there. I, uh, it could even something just heavy. Uh, you can, you know, obviously hurt something, or you can also drop chemicals on there too. So I recommend you always know the days we do in lab. I recommend you do not wear those things. But I'm not going to kick you out if you do. It's your decision. Uh, you're still going to have to wear the goggles. You're still going to have to wear the aprons. But you're going to have less protection if you don't wear those things. I would recommend also you don't wear anything very expensive. Girls in particular. Um, guys generally don't dress up, except on game days sometimes they have to for certain sports. But most of the girls do every now and then. And if you wear a real nice outfit on a lab day, I mean, it, I'm not saying you're all going to go to the ER, but you spill a little hydrochloric acid on it, it's going to bleach the color out of it and it's ruined. So, not a good idea not to wear that. Another thing about um, clothing, long necklaces, leave the bling at home. Okay, these uh, bracelets that are really long, they get caught on things. Okay, same thing's true with real uh, large, um, you know, cuffs. You know, uh, that, uh, right now it's, it's hot, so you don't have to worry about that. You're wearing short, short sleeve shirts. Okay, number four, eating and drinking, not allowed. Cannot eat or drink in the lab, period. All right, uh, that means, you know, First of all, this is second and third period usually. So you're, you're, I've had classes usually first period where people are bringing stuff from cafeteria, breakfast stuff. No food. No food at all in the lab. And no goofing around. Remember I told you the other day, where do I get my sugar from? Oh, I don't have it here anymore. But my sugar bag from the back there is, uh, you know, sits back there with all the other chemicals and with all the other roaches. And you really wouldn't want to eat this, I don't think. Salt, all those other ones too. And anything that's been in these beakers, you say, well, I, you know, any beaker or any bottle you're using, it's been, had something else in it before, and maybe something left behind. So never taste or touch chemicals, that's number five. Never eat or drink in the lab. Long hair, get used to this. This is one the girls don't like. I would recommend bringing with you, uh, having in your purse most of the days, a um, hair tie, because... If you don't have one and we're using the burner, you're gonna have I'm gonna have to give you a rubber band, you have to tie it back, you know, those are no fun. So absolutely bring a hair tie, long hair. Why? We lean over, it goes right over the burner, you know, and it can catch on fire. I've actually seen people uh, do that. Not they didn't go running out of the room, you know, flaming. Uh, but they did uh, you know, singe their hair and it's very possible and it also smells bad. So that's why I don't want you to do it. Number seven. Students should be familiar with all the emergency procedures on the back of the sheet that's right here. We're going to go over every one of those. We're going to talk about each one of those. Um, number eight, lab stations must be kept clean during the experiment. As you use each chemical, put the lid back on it and put it over to the side. You'll notice there are some wooden blocks over to the side. That's They're, they're for setting your chemicals in. They'll be out on the days we're doing lab. You put them over there. Um, number nine, uh, at the end of the lab, you should always wash your hands. You never know what you left on them. However, it's not about washing your hands. Oh, I need soap, or I need uh, some people. Oh, I just use my hand sanitizer. It's not about that. Okay, it's not about bacteria. We're worried about chemicals being on it. You want to just use water. Just plain old water is fine. If you want to use soap too, you can. There's some soap in the back, but you don't have to. It's just plain old water for the stuff we use is going to be fine. It's not about bacteria. Oh, I'll just use my hand sanitizer. Those don't do anything anyway. And what they do do is not going to help you 
do do. I said do do. Uh, what they do do is not going to help you um, okay, uh, for washing chemicals. Uh, number ten. All accidents and injuries must be reported to the teacher, no matter how minor. What I'm saying here is a lot of times people will have cuts. Either they'll get a cut during the lab, or they'll have a cut coming into the lab. Just tell me. I'll have you go to the nurse, wash it off, and put a Band-Aid on it. If you have the cut coming into the lab, I'll just give you a Band-Aid to put on it before you start the lab. Um, but any other cuts, obviously, are problems you should let me know. Number 11, students may only work in the laboratory under the direct supervision of the teacher. Sometimes you have to make up a lab. If you're coming down to make one up and I'm not here, you can't start it. Never do a lab. Never go in the back of the lab without me there. And never goof around with chemicals. Like, I always have junk up here at this table for demos. I've got stuff that stays out for a couple of days back there because I've got multiple classes. And it's going to be out. I can't help that. I can't take it all in, put it back out, take it out. It's not possible. So... You guys see them back there, you don't touch anything, you don't know what's in it, you never know. Especially since Chem 2 also uses stuff back there, it's sometimes more dangerous. Um, number 12, there are a lot of safety lab questions, quiz questions I'm going to have. This is a great one, okay? If I use too much of something, a natural tendency is I'm going to pour that, oh, I got too much, I'll pour it back into the stock bottle. Never, ever do that. Never. Because... If it's contaminated, you've now ruined the entire stock bottle. And you say, well, how did it get contaminated? I just poured a little bit out. I just took a little spatula out, and I put it right back in. Well, the beaker it's in could be contaminated. Some, you know what? Wa tap water will ruin, just tap water, will ruin uh, silver nitrate. That's stuff I use the other day, stuff in the brown bottle. If I put silver nitrate in the tap water, it ruins the whole bottle. It has to be distilled water I use for that. Um, so you never return unused chemicals to the stock bottle, and that's a good quiz question. So what's the next one? If you have an acid or a base burn, you never treat it with anything but cold running water or something I have back there called Nutrisol, which I would only use if it was bad and I would, I would do it for you. But um, other than that, you're just going to use water, just plain old cold running water. Number 14 is another good quiz question because I could ask it forward or reverse. When diluting acid, always pour the acid into the water, never to reverse. The reason being... If I pour water into acid, it actually gets very, very hot at the top. It gets spattered up at you. Acid into water it dilutes it and, it, and it doesn't do that. It does get hot, though. I said, what kind of reaction must it be then? Exothermic, right. Um, number 15, glassware to be heated. Not a good question. You will notice on any glassware that I can heat, it will either say, and there's words that you've seen before, Pyrex, you've all heard of Pyrex, or Kymax is another one, uh, K-I-M-A-X. Both of those words, one of the, or the other of those words, would be written on either a test tube or whatever to be. You should always check. Most of the stuff I have back there, I only bought for years and years. I've only bought Pyrex, Pyrex or Kymex. But there may be some glassware back there that got you know, snuck in there from years and years ago. So you have to be careful. And finally, number 16 is something that I really don't have to worry about much for a chemistry class. But obviously, if I had, um, especially an honors chemistry class, misbehavior of any kind. Okay. Now, what happens there is sometimes people are just goofing around. You know, we have squirt bottles, water squirt bottles with still water in it. What's the harm in that? I'm just going to squirt somebody with it. Well, the biggest harm in that, no, the water in there is not going to burn anybody. But what's going to happen when you squirt them? They're going to jump. They're going to drop something. They're going to move. They're going to knock something over. And lab, especially one this big, has to be taken very seriously, especially one with 26 people in a very small space. Just moving, just movement it is moving around in that kind of space is going to be difficult enough. Okay? All right. Now, we're on the back side. Take a look at the back. This is to certify that I, you can put your name right there, write that, uh, print your name right there right now, because you're going to be signing these and, and handing them back to me. So print your name at the top there. Have been instructed in the following safety components of this science class. Number one, safety rules. We just read every one of them, put a check mark to that box over to the right. Okay, number two, fire extinguishers. Okay, I've got uh, several different um, ways we can deal with fire. I've got this fire extinguisher right here. Okay, show you this one here. And I've got another one. Look straight back there. See that one back there? That's a chemical fire extinguisher, it's a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. They're used for different purposes. The uh, chemical fire extinguisher is more of um, 
uh, it's, 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 first of all, it's not rechargeable like this one is. Every year, there's a little tag on here, you can see. Every year, um, a company comes in and does all the fire extinguishers uh, for the school and recharges ones that have been used. And this one gets used every year because I do that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it gets used every year because I have to shoot somebody in the face with it. Um, just to show you how to use it. Now, you notice the power this has behind it. Okay, I do not want to use this on a small fire because now I've got a large fire all over the place. All right? You're, it's going to be flying all over the place. You use this if something large is on fire, like a football player. You could use this. Get it? That was funny. <laughs> no, you wouldn't use it on a football player either. You would use it on a large fire, which, and you would point it at the base of the fire. You pull a little pin out, and you would use it. But you don't, I've never had to use it except to shoot, what's your name? Gavin. Gavin in the face. Uh, I shoot Gavin in the face, and then I, that's the only, the only real use for this. Matter of fact, it says right on here, do not shoot Gavin in the face, but I ignore that. Um, but no, seriously, you would, you have other ways of dealing with fire. Uh, that was cold, wasn't it? See, that's nice. Cool, that cool thing is that little hot. Uh, so where would I use that? I would use that again on a large fire, but I would not want to do small fires with the big fire extinguisher. What else could I use? Well, if, like I said, if a, large, if a person's on fire, right over there is a fire blanket, and that you would stop, drop, and roll. You remember that from Officer Bodwalk? You ever have him? Yeah? Okay. So you wrap yourself up in the fire blanket, and uh, that's fire retardant, um, and you basically... Uh, um, roll around until you put the fire out. Uh, that's for a person who's on fire. Um, the, um, if I have another, a lot of most small fires I have, I've got sand in the back. I will show you that when we go back there in a minute. Uh, if you have something small on fire, like a, 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 on your desk, sand is a great way to do it. You don't want to use water most of the time because there's a lot of electrical outlets back there, you know, and you don't want to do that. So you want to use uh, sand for a small fire or just cover it up or just push it into the sink. I mean, there's a lot of ways to deal with small. And I, you do get, like, we'll be doing a popcorn lab, and sometimes the oil catches fire. Most of the time, it'll just burn itself out. If you have to put something out, you can just put a lid over the top of it and smother it. Sand is back there for small fires. Fire blanket for people. Large fires, the fire extinguishers. Two of them, one back there, one here. Okay? Um, C, we're on C now. Eye protective devices. You will be wearing your um, goggles every day in every period. We do allow. Okay? That's the only thing we're going to use. We don't have face shields or anything like that. D, E, and F, actually, are. I'm going to show you all of those back there in a few minutes. So you can leave those blank for right now. We're going to walk back there. I'll turn off the video when I'm all done here. Uh, we're going to walk back there. I'll show you about the safety shower, the eye wash station, and all that stuff. The master shutoff is right over here. It's this big red button. I have had to use this, and I have other people have had people use it. I use it every day, as a matter of fact. When I leave, I hit that button. It's just the power and the gas off to the entire room. That way, if a uh, custodian's in here accidentally hits one of these uh, gas jets, um, I don't have to worry about it because uh, it's not gonna. The gas is off, so it's electricity and everything else. But uh, you, if we had a fire, that's one of the first things I'd probably ask you to do is to hit that button. That would shut the gas off. Um, okay, uh, what's next? Uh, heat sources. I'm going to show you how to light the burner. I think I showed you once before, maybe. I did it when I was doing a demo, but I'll show you much better. Probably at the end of the period today, what time is this over? 10. 11. Well, then not today. I'll have to hurry up here, as a matter of fact. First aid procedures, that's the nurse's office right down the hallway. I'm not going to treat you. And the fume hood's right there. That's the thing that, what's your name? Kayla is looking through right now and doesn't like the fact that she can't see anything, but don't blame me. Blame guidance. They put all you guys in here. Um, so we got to go back because we don't have a whole lot of time. Wait till I get heavy in here. Let me, let me shut off this burner. You're going to sign this at the end and hand it in, but...